Hey guys, this is Dami in Catch Me on the Aussie Hour with Chris Meredith. First of all, you've been so busy since we last spoke. How are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, when was the last time we spoke? It was, it was a couple of years ago. It was. It was I Hear a Song album. So we, we've spoke now. I think this is the oh. third time that we've spoke. So love it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Look, it's been great. A lot's happened since then again. You know, I've been touring. I've been uh, writing songs. And, you know, yeah, that's now I've released the song that I've written. And it's been a long, long winding road. But I'm here. You're here. You've got here. And I love it. It's so authentic. And talking about the success of Crying Underwater already has just been immense. I mean, first of all, how did Crying Underwater begin? Well, I was talking with my friend Michael Tan, who who um who's in my band. He's the you know MD, and we've been working together a while now. And you know, we we're talking about just how these days when people feel sad and down, which we all do at some you know certain points in our lives, it's really really hard to actually talk to somebody about how you actually feel and we end up just wearing this mask and pretending everything's fine. That day we wrote the chorus to the Crying Underwater um, that's how it came about um, because when you're crying underwater you can't tell whether you're crying or you're not crying and you know it, it was just something that I guess I experienced myself but also it's a common experience these days especially with you know social media and things like that. It is, it's a big pressure on people and something like a song like Crying Underwater and coming from yourself it's kind Kind of like Dami Im is letting us know that it's okay to not be okay, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. I, I think more than anything, you know, I just wanted people to sort of listen to the song and, you know, not trying to bring them to feel down or anything, but just want people to feel like that's normal and, it, you know, it's not, they're not the only ones going through that kind of feeling. Yeah, no, totally, totally. I, to I totally get it. And listen to the song the first time, it's so heartfelt, it's so deep. I mean, for me, as a fan and part of the Dami I mean, I'm sure many listeners out there, this feels one of the most personal songs you've ever put out there. Would you say that's right? Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, look, I've been writing songs since I was a teenager. And I guess for a long time, I just haven't been able to write from that deep place because of, I guess, you know, so much pressure and so many things to think about, you know, like what, you know, what, what are people going to want to hear? What's the label going to want? And like, it's just, it was so hard. And then I thought, you know what, like that's that's one of the reasons that I started pursuing this career as a singer because I wanted to sing my own songs and tell stories. So I was really desperate to get back to that and I guess Crying Underwater is kind of one of the first ones that, that was really from deep down and really kind of honest, you know, without trying so hard to be just something to please somebody. No, I completely get that. It's coming from an honest place as well, which you can just tell. I mean, the Dami Army and your fans and I think music lovers around the world are really connected with it because it is so honest. Now, there you talked about the sound as well. Is this a sound of things to come, maybe for a new album or is this just a style for now? Um, I uh, worked with Andy Mack on this one. He produced the track and yeah, what I, yeah, I mean the, the sound is, I really love the sound obviously is my song but I think that's sort of sort of in the direction that I'm going where it you know it's completely modern it's you know it's pop and it's it's not like trying to be like a you know a song from a different era it's it's now and you know we were just trying to experiment with different uh, sounds and you know different percussion sounds and everything just trying to create my own sound and I think with this song we've achieved that and yeah I think my album which I'm working towards will sort of be in in this world Oh I love it it's like Exciting, more songs and oh damn me, I can't wait. I cannot wait. And I'm sure you know <laughs> Australia, but the UK, Europe, everywhere will be so excited for another dummy album because I've gotta say, your heart beats album for me, that album I listen to it at least three, four times a week, and it's the perfect Are you album. No, seriously, hand on heart for me. Oh, and you, you know Wow. Just walking up and down the street, there's just some songs there and your voice there as well. I mean, it's just phenomenal. So you know, to have another 
another Dami album as well coming. I just couldn't ask for more. And that's yeah. just for me personally. It, oh, thank you. That, that's like, that's so sweet. That's like the sweetest thing ever someone said. But um, yeah, like, I mean, it's it's been a long time since I did Heartbeats. And to be honest, like when I made Heartbeats, like I put a lot of heart into that. And I was new to this industry working with the label and it was all new and very confusing. But, you know, I was quite happy with the album and it's just like, I just didn't really know how to work with the industry and the people there and, you know, just things were just really difficult and I ended up, you know, having to do the carpenters and covers and which 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 I enjoyed as well. But, you know, like, I'm just really glad now I'm coming back to doing what I'm really passionate about, which is my own songs that I write from the heart. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of like come around 360 because I think, like, to where you started, and you've gone through everything you've gone through which is experience which we all need regardless of what we're doing but now this new album when it comes out is going to be I think probably the best work you've ever created it's just going to be phenomenal I can't wait wow thank you yeah I, I really hope so and I, I know it's going to be yeah definitely going to be the best thing I've done because I'm you know I'm just so so passionate about it and I just love the process of uh, working on this album as well so yeah oh love it Dami well we've got to talk about you, you touched on it before um, so you're on your dreamer tour as well right now going all around Australia I mean how is the tour going tour has been great it's been you know so good to just go out on the road again and you know meet those fans out there um, I've been doing all the regional areas in Australia as well which is you know like Australia is so spread out so just like going on different flights and driving like hours and hours with the band you know it's been uh, tiring but also really rewarding because I get to meet these fans in different areas and just uh, just showcasing my music all the songs that I've released some songs from Heartbeats album um, and the new stuff as well so it's been yeah so much fun doing that and that's the thing when you go on tour you're really connecting with the Dami Army and one thing I've got to say as well I mean I've been welcomed into the Dami army like no before and it's like a huge family of, of love and I mean even one of them because I've never seen you live and I do comment and I'm like I really want to see Dami live it's one thing I've not done and they even offered me a bed I mean how nice is that? Oh wow that's that's yeah Dami army is pretty special because yeah they're just like they are really like family and you know just the way they just look after each other you know, it's just so so nice to look at and building friendships with each other. It just warms my heart, and and um, yeah, they give me, of course, so much support, um, so much more than I guess any other artist. I feel so lucky, and also just yeah, like when when I release this single, it's just the way they try and you know stream and and um, get me on the chart, and like it's just like no one you know no one does that that kind of work for somebody. Like that's a lot of love, and you know, it's just like family when it when you see when I see that kind of support. So yeah, I'm I'm very grateful. Oh, beautiful, Dami. So if you look back, I'm going to take you right to the beginning now of X Factor Australia. If you look back to that audition, I mean, would you have ever dreamed you would have come so far, Dami? Never, ever. Um, I never ever would have imagined. Like even. You know, like winning X Factor was a big surprise for me because I auditioned just, you know, with realistic expectations. Like I just wanted to get some exposure so that I could build my uh, singing career, you know, like something would would have been better than nothing. And then it happened. And, and um, after I won, I expected realistically a career of a couple of years. And then I thought I, my career would die because that, you know, that's normal for a real, reality TV show person. So, yeah, but just, just the fact that I'm here what, six years later and I'm still making my music and I have, you know, such great fans and I'm still touring, like, I just feel happy. And, and I'm also in the happiest place ever in my career, even though, you know, like, it's it's never easy to promote your music, but I still feel like I'm really doing what I believe in and I feel so confident about it. So, yeah, I'm in a really happy place right now. So positive, Dami. I love it. What's your proudest moment in your life so far? Proudest moment? There's so many moments, but me doing something that I truly believe in is, you know, at the moment, I'm so proud that I've made that choice and not come to what I guess other people sort of might want me to do, you know, just, just 
to figuring out things for myself and I'm really proud of that at the moment and I think the other one is the obvious one is Eurovision was you know it will always be like a real real proud moment of my entire life like something that I I always remember because it's incredible it's Eurovision it was incredible it so was I was sat there as well and I was ringing I was like oh my god Dummy's gonna win she's gonna win it's so good Dummy it's it's such an amazing moment that as well and one again you know the whole world can share with you which I just absolutely love and such a proud moment as well so good so good yeah it's it's just so much fun and just being part of it with you know millions of people uh, Eurovision community just that was you know it's strong The, the Eurovision community is so strong I mean people are like die hard fans of Eurovision, aren't they? Yeah, and and you know some people travel to every every Eurovision. You know they go through all the different countries and celebrate Eurovision. And I was just think like, wow, how cool would that be? Like, because Australia is a little bit too far, and I, I know some Eurovision fans still do that. But yeah, I think that's just such a fun thing to do each year if you can get to it. Yeah, definitely, it is, it is. So talking about you said about travel there as well, dummy. I mean, one thing I would love is to see you in the UK at. Some some point have you got any plans in the future to come and see us you know i'm i am talking about some overseas opportunities and you know i can't say anything yet but there's some some exciting plans in the works for for uk and europe so yeah Ooh, it would be good to, well, i will get my dream i will get my dream to see you live which will be great yeah you, you'll have to be the front row then I, I will trust me i will be i would be there <laughs> straight away when the tickets release i will be there um with it dummy well i've just got a quick fire round for you dummy is that all right so what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received oh best piece of advice i think it's to uh this is a bit, bit, it's a bit serious but just focus on your values rather than the goal oh this is too deep if you just focus on the destination you can't enjoy every day you know but if you just focus on your value and what you want out of your life uh which what kind of values to live by then you can be happy no matter you know how successful or not so successful you are there you go deep oh, deep deep damn it. i love that i love that okay so what's your favorite movie cinema parody so it's an old italian movie with beautiful music ah we'll have to check that one out okay tea or coffee definitely coffee i knew that one i knew that one i love that <laughs> i knew that one i knew that was gonna be coffee <laughs> what's your favorite favorite thing in your closet right now thing in my closet um i've got these really chunky white trainers that i'm wearing on tour at the moment i really love them i'd wear it everywhere once Ooh. the tour is over is it dark chocolate or white chocolate uh dark white chocolate isn't chocolate i'm sorry oh i love that david oh that's some conversation about that it says okay describe <laughs> yourself as a teenager in three words as a teenager oh gosh stupid Moody and tomboy. Oh, I, I, we still want to love you, Dammy. Don't worry. Three? <laughs> that's three. Yeah. Uh, he said, <laughs> your favorite song you have written. Favorite song. Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> I'm always going to say the latest one because I'm, like, obsessed with it. Uh, Crying Underwater, there you go. (laughs) Yes, Dami, that's amazing. Hey, guys, this is Dami in Catch Me on the Aussie Hour with Chris Meredith.